Hey everybody, today I'm going to be seeing if there's any of you that can see forbidden colors. In order to understand what a forbidden color is, we have to learn a little bit about how we actually perceive color. For example, this A on my Action Lab shirt looks yellow, right? But what that means actually is that there's both red and green light coming off of this and the pigment in there, it absorbs the blue light. So just red and green light are coming off and when we see red and green light together, it makes yellow light. And if you don't believe me that red and green light make yellow, well let me actually show you that red and green light actually do make yellow. For example, I have here a red light, a green light, and a blue light bulb. So let me show you what it looks like when we have all of them on. When I have all of these on, you can see that this white poster board in the back looks white. But then when I unscrew the blue light bulb, now everything is yellow. So you can see the green light plus red light makes yellow light. Now yellow might seem a little bit weird because if you know a little bit about color vision, you know that the color from our vision comes from some cells in our eyes called cones. And there's cone cells in our eyes that are sensitive to short wavelengths, medium wavelengths, and long wavelengths. And so that corresponds to the colors blue, green, and red. But you'll notice that you don't see any yellowish colors in here. So where does the yellow come from? Usually these three types of cone cells get the most attention when color vision is taught. But we can't forget about where the signal from these cone cells actually go to next is what actually determines the color that we perceive. So this first step is called the trichromatic stage. This is where the cones receive the wavelength of light. But then after that is a secondary stage and this is where it gets really interesting. At this point, there are four different colors that can be perceived, and these different colors come from two different types of cells. One is a type of cell that I've labeled here with a B, and the other is a type of cell that I've labeled here as with a G, and you'll see why in a second. So with this B cell over here, when it receives light from these cones, it undergoes a kind of addition-subtraction process with the light. So what it does is it takes the signal from all these cones, and it adds red and green together and it subtracts blue. And if it ends up with a positive number, then we're going to perceive yellow. If it ends up with a more negative number, we're gonna perceive blue. And when it's some combination of a more in the middle, then we're gonna get kind of a white light. And these G cells over here do a similar thing. So when they receive red plus blue light, sorry, that's a B right there, then it goes in the positive direction. But if it receives green light, then it goes in the negative direction. So basically blue light inhibits the signal on these B cells and green light inhibits the signal on these G cells. So what does all this have to do with forbidden colors? Well look at the final output down here. You'll notice that one cell can only give two signals, some shade of blue or some shade of yellow. And this cell can only give some shade of red and some shade of green. If you combine all of these colors together, you can get every color that we can visually perceive. But you'll notice one interesting thing. You can see that there's no way that you can kind of have a yellowish bluish color. Because as you add more blue, it doesn't turn to a bluish yellow, but it turns more white. And as you keep adding blue, then it turns blue. And actually this color isn't exactly red, but it's actually a magenta color. So as you have red plus blue, you get magenta. And as you add more green to it, it goes towards a white color and then it turns to a darker and darker green but there's never a point where you see a reddish green, and there's never a point where you see a bluish yellow. And again, if you don't believe me that's true, let me show you a physical experiment that shows you this. You'll never see a bluish yellow. So back to my setup here, I have a blue, red, and green light, and we know that red and green make yellow, so I basically I have a yellow light and a blue light. And I can adjust how much yellow or blue it's getting just by covering the blue light, or by covering the red and green light. So for example, let's say I start off with yellow light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more and more blue light to this yellow light. And you'll see that you never have a point where you see a yellowish blue at all. So let's start off with complete yellow. Now I'm going to add blue. So I'm adding more and more blue to it, more and more blue. And you can see that now that yellow is just becoming a lighter yellow. It's going more towards white. And the more blue I add to it, the lighter that yellow becomes until eventually that yellow is now white. And now as I continue to add more and more blue light to it, I just add more and more and more blue 
that white becomes a darker and darker and darker blue until eventually it's completely blue. So you can see that by adding blue light to the yellow light, there was never a point where I saw yellowish blue, but only it got lighter and lighter yellow until it was white and then it got darker and darker blue. And now if I add yellow light to this blue, add more and more and more yellow light, eventually it becomes white. And then as I add more and more and more yellow light to it, it just goes from white to a dark yellow. To show you that's not true for everything, just yellow and blue, let me show you what it looks like when you just mix red and blue together. So let me start off with blue again, and I'm going to mix more and more red light with that blue. So I'm gonna to start to add red. So you can see that the blue now just starts to look more red. It just becomes redder and redder and redder. Now it's full magenta. And then as I add more and more and more red light, more and more and more, it goes all the way to red. So you can see during that whole process, you could see it slowly turning from blue to red. So the whole time you could describe any point in the middle as bluish red or reddish blue. So now go backwards, add more and more blue light to it. You can see it getting bluer and 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 bluer until it's blue. So for all the other color combinations besides blue and yellow and magenta and green, you can combine them in any way and you can describe them as a bluish red or a greenish yellow, but you can never describe something as a bluish yellow. Now this is where it may get confusing for artists or people that are used to mixing paint together because you know that when you mix yellow paint with blue paint, you get green paint. So you may be thinking, of course I can see yellowish blue. Yellowish blue is just green. But that's not true. Yellowish blue is not green. Green is a different color altogether that you get when you mix yellow and blue. So there is no such hue as yellowish blue. There's no such hue as yellowish blue. And that is the reason why it's called a forbidden color. Yellowish blue is a forbidden color. But does that actually mean we can't see it? Well, maybe not. The way that our eyes are set up are such that you cannot see through the same eye a yellowish blue color. But what if in one eye we're getting a yellow signal and in the other eye we're getting a blue signal and then in our brain we mix them together? Well, for most people it still doesn't work, but for some people they might be able to see a yellowish blue. So let's see if you can see it. So on one side of the screen here I have yellow and on the other side I have blue. And what I want you to do is I want you to cross your eyes together so that the cross appears right in the center. And you'll notice a weird thing start to happen. You'll notice that those colors don't really mix together and form really anything for most people. Most people will see that your eyes kind of start flashing either color. It's either yellow or blue, yellow or blue, yellow or blue. It's your brain trying to decide what's going on here. It's getting this input signal of yellowish, bluish that normally it can't get, it's forbidden to get, and so it doesn't know what to do with it. And so for most people when they look at it, they don't really see a yellowish blue, they see one or the other in some part of the picture. In the 1980s, they did a study similar to this where they saw if people could actually perceive yellowish blue by getting different inputs in their eyes. And what they found is for some participants, they did actually perceive a new color that they had never seen before. And they didn't know how to describe it. The best way they could describe it is yellowish blue. And since then, that study has tried to be replicated. And in some cases, they found the same results. And in some cases, they found different results. There's a lot of things that you have to control in a study like this. Brightness is a very important factor, and also where you're focusing on the image is an important factor. So there's been conflicting evidence, and scientists still aren't quite sure if some people can perceive yellowish bluish. So let me know in the comments section if you're actually able to perceive a new type of color that you've never seen before, yellowish blue or bluish yellow. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And if you haven't checked out theactionlab.com, head over there right now. You can get yourself an Action Lab t-shirt. It glows in the dark, which is really awesome. 
And also you can get yourself an Action Lab subscription box. This is a box where I send out quarterly experiments to your house and you can replicate similar experiments that you've seen me do on my channel. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.